Greetings at our Fridgely, it's me, the Necrofessor, and I'm here to show you some of the stages that it took for me to make my stitched up butcher's apron, like I used to have back in the old bloody days. So let's get started. Behold. This is a piece of leather that I took off of a sofa. Okay, so just for reference, this is another butcher's apron that I happen to have. And it has served me well over the years, as you can see. Now, the trick is that I want to get a look of stitchery going on, like lines, big heaping chunks of flesh that may or may not be from the same individual pieces of beef flesh, if you know what I mean. Yeah, welcome to the flip side. Now I flip the leather over and what you're gonna wanna do is take a marker of some kind and uh, plot out, plot out something, you know, you know, just give yourself a wide berth uh, to work with. And just kinda trace and it's nothing crazy. And as for all this fringe stuff down here, I'm gonna cut it up and make it all nasty, rotty, and cool. Uh, continue on, we're moving the main thing. And you might be wondering, well, why are you d giving it a wide berth? Well, the reason I'm giving it a wide berth is stop asking questions, that's why. I'll show you later. Now, we're gonna move all the way over here, and once we get the line work, we're done. We're gonna pull it back. Just gonna pull it back, and moving on to the next step. Okay, now that we've got our outline set up, I'm doing random lines. Now this is what those in the biz would call artistic interpretation. Uh, and those outside of the biz might also call it the same thing. So, if you're not careful, you might be in the biz. And I don't want to do way too many of them because also you have to keep in mind that one is going to be sewing this stuff back together. And that takes time, and effort, and nobody likes any of that. Now here's an old trick that I learned back in the day. And... Okay, so, uh, you're gonna want to practice that, but it's really easy and anybody can do it. Okay, so, moving on. Oh dear. The frickin' stein fell apart again. I guess we're just gonna have to stitch it back together. Just all you need is a strong enough needle and some strong enough thread. This is upholstery thread. Yeah! And we're done sewing it all up. That certainly took a long time. And it's death on the hands. However, if you want to alleviate the hand problem, you can always switch up to some sort of needle nose pliers or the trusty multi-tool to help push the needle through the leather. I just did a simple whip stitch and made it look all nasty and gnarly. And now we're moving on to the leather staining process. Now in order to stain stuff, you want to make sure that your leather is not sealed like this sofa leather is. So we're going to have to scuff it up a bit by kicking it in the sidewalk. And then we can move on to the leather staining part. In order to do that, we're going to stain it with some of this alcohol-based Phoebing's leather dye. And you can use any sort of dye you wish, but that's the one we're going to use for this part. Now in order to apply leather dye to leather, you can use these sort of dauber things, which is good for applying it on. But in order for this large-scale modeling application, we're just going to use a rag. Now do make sure that you wear some sort of protective gloves because this stuff stains like crazy. We found a nice little chunk of concrete to start our scuffing. You're gonna want to have to wear proper scuffing boots for this part. But just start stomping. Now, don't worry about the threading part of your creation. It's all part of the look. And if anything gets too rotted, you can always go back and sew some of it back up. Yeah, cool. Now do take attention that whenever you're scuffing, to go ahead and scuff along the lines around the stitching, not quite the stitching itself. You're gonna wanna be throwing extra stain into those crevassiers in order to complete that nice, deep, creepy stitch look later on. Massage that beef. 
After about a minute or so, it starts to look like this. Like a bunch of kick prints and zombie hands all over the thing. And that's good. I'm gonna keep going. By the way, this differentiation in color is whenever the meaty slab was folded over when it was turned into a chair. And these little uh, areas are where the buttons used to be. Okay, so here we are out in a little patch of grass, and since this is an exact science, we're gonna go ahead and create a bit of a mixture. This is just a bit of a half cup of water, and this is Phoebing's leather dye. The color is saddle tan. Now, saddle tan is uh, a bit of a lighter color, but still creates a bit darkish color, so we're gonna dilute it with just water, just water. So if you're wondering about the exact measurement, it's a half a skull cup candle of water. And three, uh, splooshes of dye. Now the method is very simple. We're just going to dip the rag and get a small amount on there. And then in a small circular motion, go ahead and start applying it all over the piece, making sure to dig in to the stitching pattern. Don't be afraid if it's a bit uneven or weird. That's kind of the point. Alright, it's starting to look pretty good. Now, I'm going to switch over to another color, dark brown, and we're just going to go full on in. One, two, three. I'm going to start doing a splotchy effect from the very bottom up, creating a nice fade look. I like the look of the combat boot, it makes it look like somebody kicked me. I'm making sure that whenever I do the darker part, I'm also doing the staining on the back side as well, at least on the bottom, because if it flaps up or anything, I'd also like it to be dark. And after flipping it over, this is what it looks like. Not too shabby. Now, I added some dark brown all around the edges as well, and I kind of really rounded it out. Also made sure to go back and I hit some more of the stitching lines to bring them out. Now, moving on to the next step. Okay, now we're back inside. And this is it laid out with the apron as a reference. And as you can see, the line that we made earlier with the wide berth is all weird and misshapen and stuff. So, we can now use this apron as a proper reference. And so, what I have in mind is to keep it roughly the same shape, maybe make it a bit bigger up here. And uh, down here, make it all nice and ratty. And as for all the extra stuff, well, the reason why we dyed all this extra stuff is so we can make the straps with it. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's get started. Okay, the new line is drawn out. You know what time it is. <laughs> okay, and so we got this figured out. Now what you're going to want to do is uh, stain the back of these straps that you made from the excess that was cut. And that'll be good. Yes. And once you have your straps all stained the way you like, go ahead and start applying them to the apron. Alright, I'm officially done stitching it all together and what I did is I snipped a small hole in there and I slipped the piece of leather through, folded it over and stitched it onto itself creating a nice protective layer. We now officially have a stitched up leather apron, but I want to take it a couple steps further. This is a wood burning tool, and what I'm going to do is burn elder insignias into it.
Now that we're done with that, I'm going to apply some Dove's Blood ink to the inside of the burn wounds with this stubby brush. Do make sure that your blood is locally sourced. Okay, now that the symbols are covered in blood, I'm gonna go into the stitches and apply some blood as well. Catch up with you in a moment. Ta-da! Now it's starting to look really nice. The emboldened elder signs all the way around it and scrawled into this nice fleshy look. I went ahead and I took some other artistic liberties, such as adding blood splatters in various places. Just splattering it on there as well as painting it on there as well and creating an effect of like a zombie patient that was reaching up from the slab to claw at me. Very cool. We're just about done. Just a few more steps. Okay, there's a couple more things that I'd like to do and that is simulate blaster fire as well as char up the bottom of this a little bit. Now it's imperative not to go too crazy overboard with this because you could totally fry all your hard work. to go ahead and char it around these holes that I had made. There's a spot right here that I especially want to scorch to make it look like somebody got a really good shot at me. And once it's scorched, I can go back in there and stab it up a little bit. And apply trauma to the wound. Smoosh it out. Rub some dirt in it. Make it look freaky. Torch it up just a little bit more for flavor. And bam, we have a convincing looking blaster wound. Ta-da! That is what is required to create an awesome, bloody, stitched up apron. I hope that I gave you some ideas in which you can pursue your own stitched up fleshy things. Let me know if you like these kind of videos and I'll try and do more in the future. Alright, for all of you out there testing the fringes of science, stay creepy.